Hi, this is Dan Handeen. I'm up at the Deep Winter Greenhouse at the Bemidji Community Food Shelf in Bemidji, Minnesota. This is one of the five uh, following the prototype design, the DWG V2.0 design that was built uh, through the um, Extension Service, the Renewable Sustainable Development Partnerships of the University of Minnesota. And I'm going to do a quick walkthrough. Um, some of the things you can see uh, in this view right here are the steeply angled glazing wall. This is at 60 degrees, corresponds to the coldest night of the year here, or the coldest day of the year rather, here in uh, northern Minnesota. Um, also the ventilation window, as you can see up here. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's basically it. This is a triple glazed polycarbonate glazing. It's about R2.6. Um, the rest of the walls are uh, insulated. 2x6 frame construction with mineral wool insulation. There's R21 in the walls and R30 in the roof. Uh, I'll go inside and we can check some other things out. Going into the what we call the packing shed area right now. This is a little area on the north end of the greenhouse. It's uh, 8 feet wide by 24 feet long. That's the entire length of the greenhouse. This essentially does two things. One, it gives a uh, storage space for growing media and that sort of thing. You can see some of the uh, peat and uh, fertilizer, um, other stuff that they're storing in here. It also secondarily acts as an airlock so that the windows to the exterior are here and then the window to the actual, or the door to the actual growing area is uh, right here. And so we'll, we'll go into that right now. We are inside. Um, this particular greenhouse, uh, let's see, a couple different design variations. One is that they used a metal corrugated um, siding material for the interior finish. That's fine. They also did a nice job of doing vapor sealing on the interior for this cavity stud wall construction. Um, again, the basic principle by which this works is that there is a solar gain that comes in through the glazing wall. The hot air rises to the surface of the greenhouse. You can see this um, duct up that goes uh, along the interior of the peak of the greenhouse. That is open on both ends. You can kind of see up there. The hot air is drawn in through that horizontal duct back here and then down below into the rock bed, which is underneath us. Um, in this case, we've got a cement floor, um, basically that is capping the rock bed is about four feet of inch and a half diameter river rock. Um, this basically explains what's happening down there. We've got this little schematic. Essentially the hot air goes in here, comes down here, and then it's distributed in a horizontal plenum. This is, uh, this is perforated. Um, and then it makes its way, the hot air makes its way through this four inch, or I'm sorry, four foot thick um, rock bed. That Air then exits uh, the rock bed, basically a sealed duct, comes out here at the base of the glazing wall. It's all drawn through, um, basically uh, it's sucked through from up there, um, from the ducts all the way down through the rock bed by this single fan. This is an inline, essentially a eight inch radon fan. And then it's exhausted out into this um, horizontal uh, plenum at the base of the glazing wall. Um, and basically just recirculating the air through the, uh, through the growing area and then down again through the rock bed. The fan is controlled by a couple of thermostats. Ideally, we've got one set for the cold temperatures, essentially the, the times when it would be extracting hot air or heat from the rock bed and reintroducing it into the, the growing area. Um, and that would be set for, I don't know, maybe 40 degrees, something like that. Um, and then the other end is the um, when you'd be charging up the rock bed and so setting that to something like maybe 65 or 70 degrees. So that's when you have the fan on to suck the hot air out of the growing area and you're injecting that heat into the, the rock bed underneath. Um, there's uh, ventilation windows on both ends. Uh, these are currently um, just manually operated right now, crank out casement type. Um, they're regular vinyl frame double pane windows. Um, basically the reason those were chosen was for tight air sealing. Um, we're trying to you know, basically control any drafts that would be happening in here. Um, having a little bit of issue with uh, freezing during the really cold times and when we've got excess moisture in the air. 
Um, but uh, still working on how to address that issue. Um, we've got our backup heater here. This is essentially a two-stage um, electric resistance garage heater, more or less. Um, and this is our backup heating. Again, this is our insurance. Uh, it, uh, you know, it only takes one time to freeze everything out. So um, in case that should happen during, you know, after a couple really cloudy days or something like that, really cold snap, uh, then that can provide um, backup heating. Um, what else? Temperature in here currently is, I don't know if you can see, it's about 82 degrees on uh, the surface of the metal intake duct. And that's eh, about 82 degrees in the in regular growing area too. Um, it's about 65 degrees outside right now up here in Bemidji, um, but nice sunny day. Um, we've got the ventilation windows open too, so that might be affecting the temperature a little bit. Um, as far as what's growing in here right now, they've got some starts um, and some greens going. They're working on different um, configurations of planter setups. Um, and so they're just getting into uh, really how to um, utilize this space. Uh, they had some personnel turnover this past winter, so they actually weren't in um, um, you know, optimizing the operation uh, just because of they didn't have enough people to, to run it. So um, we'll see what happens this coming winter. Also, with this particular greenhouse, we've got a monitoring system set up. Um, partnering with the U of M Solar Energy Lab through the Mechanical Engineering Department, we have set up um, an array of thermocouples. Basically, it's measuring the temperature within the rock bed. And uh, this consists of um, 90, I'm sorry, 45 different uh, thermocouples that are arrayed, again, within the rock bed. We've got, actually, I've got a little photo right here. I don't know if that's visible, but this shows... Um, Basically, the filling of the rock bed, here we've got the horizontal plena, and then there's nine columns in here, um, nine stakes, and those each have five different thermocouples mounted onto them. All of the wires from the thermocouples come up here through a tube at the back of the greenhouse, and then that is all attached to a data acquisition computer, and that, um, when it's in operation, should be logging the temperatures um, throughout the rock bed, um, at a, I think it's a five minute interval. Um, also, we're measuring the temperature in the intake of the, um, the duct, and we're measuring airflow through the duct, so we know exactly how much air is moving through um, the, uh, the system. Um, we are still waiting on um, definitive results from that, unfortunately. Uh, so. Um, please stay tuned for uh, more results on really what the temperature profile looks like in, within the rock bed. And then uh, that will lead us to some other ideas about um, how to optimize um, the size and configuration of the rock bed itself. So I think that's it. Uh, one thing that was mentioned on the Facebook page was that this greenhouse was in stealth mode. And that was because they actually had some glare issues. Uh, the sunlight was bouncing off of the glazing wall and disturbing some of the neighbors down to the south. Um, and so they had a shade cloth installed over the exterior surface of the glazing for a while. That's what those uh, the uh, wooden strips are um, on the on the exterior of the glazing there. Um, and they have since uh, put up another fence to the south. And I think you can see that um, that actually blocks the, any reflective glare that uh, would go out and disturb the neighbors. So. Um, so that's what that was for. Um, other than that, uh, I think I've just about covered everything. Um, this is really one of the, um, I think, the tightest greenhouses we have. Um, we don't have any uh, blower door uh, results or anything like that yet. Um, but uh, really I'm proud of this structure. Uh, they've done uh, a, an uh, outstanding job of both the construction and, um, and uh, finishing everything out. Um, so any questions? Again, as always, please feel free to either uh, write on the Facebook group or uh, contact me directly via email. All right? Thanks. Good luck.